center, they watch me with him. Watch the way we drop it in. Yo, Snapchat, why is there so much damn negativity in the world? Why are there so many pessimists in the world right now? We seem to have a little, bit of a sick culture going on, when in fact we're living through the greatest period of change in human history. For some reason, pessimism about the future is like, it's like a mimetic virus. It's a thing that spreads from brain to brain, and it's a very socially driven, cultural thing that you get caught up in. So many people get caught up in it. I think unless you're very much uh, consciously on guard uh, about all these kind of meme viruses, you're going to get caught up in it. Things like terrorism, things like, you know, Trump world you know, presidency, things like World War Three. We all know the traditional news cycle feeds off this violence and this pessimism. That's all they promote. It gets them eyeballs, gets them revenues. So they only promote terrorism and deaths and all the bad things that are happening in the world. I stopped watching news and uh, TV many, many years ago, um, but it seems like that ne negativity has really like brought itself into the mainstream online now. Um, every website I go to, I can't escape. If there's ever a terrorism attack anywhere in the world, or if Trump says something stupid again, you typically find that even the very optimistic people will reshare that, post that, or be exposed to comments about that. I feel like fear and like kind of people's gut reactions to things are a much greater medium for the mimetic virus that is pessimism and negativity to spread, and so that ends up prevailing. The problem is the data actually shows that we are living through the greatest period of change in human history, and for the positive, everything's actually getting better, and you can track those stats, and they're exponential in nature. I often notice as humans, we, we kind of have this tendency to put things in very much black or white spectrum. Rather than looking at it as a changing process or as a whole spectrum, it's like yes or no options. Like for example, do you agree or disagree? Are you iPhone or Android? Are you pessimist or optimist? Are you Republican or Democrat? I feel like this kind of dual system affects our brain. And so I think this yes-no duality has a big uh, effect on pessimists particularly because um, when they're given a new piece of information, they basically take it for what it is. They can't see it changing, they just say yes or no. So as an example, I posted an article yesterday talking about how Israel has actually worked out new efficiencies with desalination to the point where 55% of their water is actually from desal now. So this one desalination plant in Israel was actually producing 1,000 litres of desalinated water at 58 cents, which by the time it got to the end consumer had all of their water prices very comparable to US households. And as a result, Israel's now gone from a drought-stricken country to having more water than it literally needs. It's actually selling water back to its neighbours and potentially thinking about pumping up the Dead Sea. So I saw that and immediately thought, awesome, we've ended water scarcity. We can now just distribute that technology to the world and provide abundant water to the, to the entire planet. No more droughts, no more water shortages. I mean, we literally live on a water planet. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, so there should not be water droughtages and... Water droughtages? <laughs> and as a result, there shouldn't be food shortages. But of course, that post immediately got negative comments. People talking about, yeah, but what about the energy? What about the brine concentration? What about Israel's mistreatment of Palestine? Just all this negativity. And so I often wonder whether people see this kind of like duality, again, the same issue with like yes or no, or optimistic versus pessimistic, but almost like present versus future, rather than seeing it as a changing system. So the pessimists there would say that desalination will never work because it takes too much energy, so it's not going to be the future, it's not going to solve our water shortages, it's not going to save the world. Yeah, today. But see, if they actually looked at that whole thing as like an evolving process, you know, we never reach the future, it's not this end point where we get there and we stop, it's always changing, we're moving towards it, it's a proto -future. So for example, solar technology is actually doubling every 18 to 24 months, meaning we're seven doublings away from 100% solar, meaning more energy than we need in approximately 10 to 15 years. And so obviously if you have abundant energy, like more energy you can possibly use, then desalination becomes like a side thought, like it's just an obvious thing you do, um, because we live on a water planet. Abundant energy then equals abundant water. With abundant water you can do vertical farming, uh, and basically have abundant food at the source, and so no one ever starves again, and everyone has fresh water. So it's pretty obvious that technology is one of the core drivers for uh, progress, for better humanity, for a better Earth, for a better planet, for a better future. Um, but the thing to realize is it's always exponential. As an example, Moore's Law, which is the fifth paradigm of computing, has been exponential since the, since the 1900s. No world war and no depression and no presidency has stopped its pace. This may sound weird to hear, but even if Trump became president for the next eight years, it will not stop the pace of technology. Everything will still continue to get better and progress will continue to happen in a positive way. There's a tremendous amount of human capital, massive amount of investment, and many, many companies all around the world, all working to build positive futures, and they're all going to get there at some point. So more than 100% clean, renewable solar energy globally within about 10 to 15 years. Within about 5 to 10 years, we'll no longer slaughter animals for meat, and that'll actually just be a lab-grown, cultured, in vitro meat, and the same too with dairy. dairy. All dairy will be synthetic. Within about two to three years, we'll have fully autonomous self-driving cars, and that changes the landscape massively. And within about 10 years, we'll have Every single form of terrestrial transport will be electric and clean. 
Virtual reality, VR, will go mainstream within about uh, two to three years, and augmented reality, AR, will go mainstream within about five to ten years, and that'll change the landscape massively. Human implants are, you know, like the whole like transhumanist movement will actually go uh, mainstream within about one to three years. So RFID, NFC implants with even subdermal LED lights. In about five years' time, drone delivery will, will be mainstream and normal. Think of like uh, all of this stuff Amazon's doing, we're trying to deliver parcels. That's the, the best way to deliver stuff anywhere in the world. In about five to ten years, we'll also have Hyperloop systems running everywhere, operating every day. Within about four to five years, we'll be connecting up another three billion human minds to the global hive mind that is the internet. That'll be all seven billion minds connected to the internet by 2020. Within 10 years, so by 2025, there'll be 500 billion devices connected to the internet, the internet of things. In a bit over five years, fully autonomous robotic vertical farms will provide most of our food needs directly where we live. With things like the Tesla Gigafactory, they're basically designing the machine that designs the machine. They're building factories like you build a CPU. So within 10 years, 100% fully autonomous manufacturing everywhere. Right now, AI is exploding with things like machine learning, deep learning, neural networking. Basically, everything is going to be embedded with self-learning, self-evolving, narrow AI within five years. With the progress of groups like Siri and Cortana and Viv and Google Now and uh, Amazon Echo, within five years, it'll be natural to have a conversation with self-evolving, self-learning AIs. With the blockchain and groups like Ethereum, they're literally decentralizing the entire world, meaning uh, removing the power from governments and corporations and giving it back to the people as a peer-to-peer -peer economy, as a peer-to-peer -peer system. And the pace of blockchain technology is exponential as well, so within 10 years it'll completely take over. And the cool thing is it's unstoppable by design. It is like the new layer of the internet. With the pace of biotechnology and techniques like CRISPR and more to come, within about 10 years we'll cure every known human disease. And within about 20 to 30 years, we'll have the technology to actually create human longevity on vast scales to the point where we effectively become immortal. And then, of course, right now, we're literally becoming, we're in the process of becoming a multi-planetary species. That's fucking amazing. So SpaceX is launching their first mission to Mars within two years. At the end of this year, actually, Elon Musk is going to be releasing the Mars Colonial Transporter details. Literally, like, the vehicles and the plans on how to establish a fucking Mars colony. And those first Mars colonial missions are planned to begin around 2025. So within 10 years, we start setting up a Mars colony. So folks, like, we are literally living through the greatest period in human history right now. This is the greatest time to be alive. We live in a protopia. Everything is getting better. The future is going to be awesome.